Hi everyone. Today I'm working on part two of my videos about transferring your drawings onto your jelly plates and then onto fabric. I want to look at some of the more background issues today. Um, I'm going to be looking at how much do I clean my plate, what are the best techniques for me to use, what materials can I use to draw with, a few more things like that. If you haven't seen the first video, by all means, go ahead and watch this video first and get some inspiration. But I will not be going through the techniques again in this video. I will assume that you have looked at the first video, the first part of this series, and understand the basics. And then I'm just going to be moving on to some more complex issues with this. So firstly, I want to talk about how much do I clean my plate? It's an issue which is going to be personal to each one of us. I have done a series and uh, am continuing to do a series of images based on household containers. I've got fruit bowls, I've got soup bowls, I've got a pot plant. Just looking, uh, keeping it simple, keeping it in red and white. So my initial layer is red, my printing layer is white. Uh, just looking at how these images work. And the first thing that struck me when I did these was how much do I clean the plate in between prints? Now, this is the first print that I did using a red background and printing off with white and I didn't actually do much cleaning of the plate at all so what you see here uh, around the two drawings so this one was done with an oil pastel and this one was done with a ballpoint pen you'll see that there's a, a lot of color a lot of color even though I had a solid layer of white over the top a lot of the pink color from the plate below came through. Now I did do a little bit of wiping in this area so that's a lot cleaner. You can also see it was completely unintentional there must have been some different colors on the plate. I think this is from the green uh, I must have used some time ago but it has picked up every trace of color on the plate that was there previously. This second piece, I did do some wiping. You can see some sort of marks. I quite like the effect of having some darker areas around about this. And the other thing which I'll talk about in a bit more detail, if I hold it up to the camera, you can see that there's actually some text behind this image. And that's because I actually drew this uh, with oil pastel again onto a sheet of magazine paper before I printed it and I'll go into that a little bit more later. I particularly wanted to talk about this third print which I did and it's the one where I've cleaned off most of the plate or at least a lot more of the plate than I did the others and part of the problem with this one was that this is the drawing. You can see I actually drew um, my orchid in ballpoint pen but when I pulled the print off when I was transferring it virtually none of it was left so what I decided to do was to clean away and basically using this um, particular drawing as a guide I actually cleaned out a whole lot of this plate around here to give the impression of the orchid even though the actual drawing didn't really transfer there's virtually none of it transferred at all so it turned out quite well i actually really like this print this is done on a fairly flimsy very shiny but flimsy piece of paper whilst it gave me an interesting um, pattern it certainly didn't deliver what i wanted so I wouldn't use this type of paper for this transfer process, but I would use it for other 
other things in future. This final print I want to show you, I did a lot of cleaning off the plate. Now I still haven't completely eliminated all of the colour underneath. Uh, that's something to be aware of, but I did get rid of most of it. And again, you know, you can see the drawing. This paper I used was a bit thin and as a result it wrinkled, which meant that I didn't pick up every last piece of paint off the page when I transferred my initial drawing. Now it hasn't made a big difference for this because all it was was a drawing of a bowl and that just transfers and reads as a decorative pattern. It's not a big issue. If you're trying to get a very specific drawing and a very specific style onto your fabric, these are the things you're going to have to think about. Paper. That's the big question. What will I do my drawing on? And there's lots of good reasons for thinking about what you're drawing on when you're wanting to do this transfer technique because in this situation, not all papers are created equal. One of the first things I did was race over to my um, scrap bag and just grab some shiny paper. As I said, this has come from a company report. I thought it would work quite well because often the pa shiny papers work quite well with transfer printing. Um, this is the one I had problems with. It was just a little bit too thin and flimsy. The other thing which people often use, and you'll see people talking about it um, when they're doing jelly print transfers onto paper, is they'll often use a glossy magazine and get all sorts of images and things out of that. The big issue about that is copyright. I don't know where you are in the world, but really, if you are serious about your art, and you are intending to sell or exhibit this work, you really do need to think about copyright. Just because it's in a magazine doesn't mean you've got a right to take an image that you find there and incorporate it into your work without proper clearances or meeting the guidelines as specified in your country. So it can be fun, but... As I say, if you're doing this for anything other than your own personal use, I'd probably steer clear of the glossy magazines. A couple of other options. The obvious one, uh, photocopy paper. So this is your standard 80 GSM photocopy paper. It's also recycled. It works. Um, the only hassle I've had using this one is that I've discovered when I'm doing the sort of smoothing out section, sometimes um, some of the pulpy surface comes off and stays on the plate, which means I'm going to have white blobs and specks on it. You can use it, it'll work, particularly if you're just sort of testing things out. And another thing which, again, I just happened to find in my recycling bin was some lined paper out of an old um, large diary so I'm going to give this one a try this time I've got a drawing which I've done with wax crayon I finally found my old crayon this crayon is so old that I think it could actually uh, get a driver's license it's ancient this crayon, which I just bought today, is called Ultra Clean Washable. I don't know how that's going to work, whether it will interact with the paint on the page and come off, but I've decided to uh, try both the really old wax crayon and the new wax crayon on this particular picture and see how they both work. Here we go. Oh, there is the answer straight away. Those washable crayons made no impact whatsoever. And my good old-fashioned ancient wax crayon was the only thing that made a mark. 
So there you go, folks. Don't use this technique with washable crayons. Doesn't work. This image is a total experiment. I've um, I've drawn on paper with my Lyra Color Giant. I consider this a waxy sort of um, pencil. I have no idea if this is going to work or not. So let's give it a go. I am doing this a different colour this time, purely. So if I actually get a result, I can tell the difference between the two prints because I've already taken a print of a very similar drawing of my little Ibis, which is a beautiful little statuette, a copy of one of the ancient Egyptian Ibises that's in the Louvre Museum in Paris. Here's the image. Just gently, gently, gently going over this with my fingers, just very lightly. Oh, there is a little pattern. Not terribly strong, but boy, it has actually come out. Isn't that fantastic? I'm just going to grab my... Um, little wet cloth and do some tidying up around my beautiful little ibis here's the big moment i'm just about to take pull the um, print from my plate this is the the ibis drawing i did oops was it the back end of the ibis And I'm really happy to see how well that's turned out. Wow. So this is the one that was done with the good old-fashioned um, wax crayon. And this is the one. This one here is the one that was done with the colour giant pencil. So good to see both of them. Obviously a little bit of a glitch here, but... Overall, I think they've both proved worthwhile. One thing I'll just say about doing the pencil drawing. When I did this drawing, I really did press quite hard. Um, this isn't going to work if you're just going to do some light sketching. You've really got to press hard to get those marks. And happy to see that it actually worked. Well, that brings us to the end of this particular video. There are so many things to explore with this technique and I'm continuing to explore. I think there's a limit to how much you can take in in one go. So I thought we'll just leave it there for the moment. I will be coming back with some more techniques and some more different approaches to try with this process. You know the drill. If you enjoyed it, like and subscribe share with your friends let me know how you're going and whether you've had any problems or successes i'd love to hear from you um, you can always leave a comment in the bottom of the video and per usual i will be putting in the information about what i've used it will be listed under the information on the front of the video so thank you very much for being here and i'll see you next time bye